Hello and welcome to our latest video. Today we're going to be discussing the Alpha USB-L system, specifically the Alpha console. We'll go over the Alpha portable in a different video. The Alpha USB-L system is designed to provide the user with the core functionality of every USB-L system, and that's tracking. So today we're going to be going over a basic hardware review, software installation on a computer, and just going over how to configure the software for operations. Thank you for joining me. Let's get started. So let's start by going over the console, starting with the front panel. On the front, you have a power LED, a TX LED to indicate transmission from the transceiver, and an RX LED to show signal being received from the tracked beacon at the transceiver. On the back of the console, moving left to right, you have the PC connection USB, data serial connection, external GPS in, note this is also your external heading in if you choose to use it, the transceiver connection, the internal GPS antenna connector, earthing stud, power input, and power switch. Also provided with the console are a power lead, power block, a GPS antenna for the internal GPS system, a USB cable for connection with PC, a paper manual, and a USB containing the alpha software and a digital copy of the manual. The standard transceiver supplied with the alpha console is the 903C and comes with a protection block and molded umbilical. Although the transceiver can be used in free hanging mode, for the best results we recommend pole mounting the transceiver. When mounting, please avoid using the screw points on the top of the transceiver. These are not designed for mounting the transceiver for operations. So below we see how we would mount a 903C. The 903C has its forward mark facing the bow of the vessel, which we can also be seen by the round potting mark. It's attached to the pole using two Jubilee clips, using the two grooves in the transceiver body as the mounting points. And it's tie wrapped its umbilical up the pole. For the console powered on, the device should install two USB serial connectors. To view this, simply go Device Manager, and go to Ports, and it'll be the USB serial ports. Just note these numbers down, just in case. In the event the computer doesn't recognize the USB serial drivers, these are provided separately on the USB or CD disk. If you install these, the computer should now recognize the Alpha console. With that said, we can now launch the software. To launch the software, simply launch EasyTrack Alpha. So you may have EasyTrack Alpha port unavailable, so it's saying COM21 here. And printer port COM22 is unavailable. This isn't a problem. Just press OK. If you go to Setup, Communications, select COM7 for the alpha. And the data is COM8, no lower, higher number. Press OK. You will have waiting for initialization. That can take up to 40 seconds, but in this case, it was rather quick. And we can see here that we have heading, roll, and pitch updating. So we know there's communication with the transceiver. So with that done, let's just go over some of the basics of the software. To start with, let's show you how to change a beacon. To configure the beacon, simply go Setup, Beacon Configuration, and select the beacon you wish to change. So in this case, we're going to change beacon 1. This opens a new window, and in this window you'll see the following. The channel number, so the alpha system supports a predefined number of channels. So in this case, we'll change this to B3. This changes the interrogation frequencies below. This will change depending on the channel set you use. On the top right, you can select whether this beacon is being used in transponder mode or responder mode. Below that, you have beacon depth. Now this can be set to a manual depth, 
We recommend this if you are using the beacon at a known depth or in shallow water, or an auto depth. The auto depth will calculate it from the acoustic signals being returned. Where possible, we do recommend that a velocity of sound should be entered into the USBL system. To do this, simply go Setup and Velocity of Sound. The velocity of sound at the transducer phase should be entered here. Once that is entered, you can press OK. To enter velocity of sound for a beacon, we recommend you set, go Setup, Beacon Configuration, select the beacon. You can then enter the velocity of sound for the desired working depth that you will be using the beacon at. If the system is being used with any GPS, then offsets will need to be entered. To enter the offsets, simply go Setup and Offsets. Here you have the X and Y offsets. So this is from the GPS antenna to the transducer or transceiver, the transducer depth, transducer pitch. Note you would only fill this in if you were using a tilted head arrangement for tracking towfish, and the magnetic declination if known. If magnetic declination isn't known and you are using the internal compass, then we recommend using the provided website in the description below to calculate the difference. Magnetic declination is the difference between true and magnetic north for your location, so this will change wherever you are in the world. A feature you may not know the Alpha can do is input a heading source. It's a relatively new feature. To do this, you'll need to input a heading source in the GPS import. We detail what is required in the user manual, but to enable it to use external heading, go Setup, Compass, and go from internal to external. When using external, it will show a tick next to it. When data has to be output from the console, go Setup, Data Output, and Serial Printer Format. There are several string types available here. To review these in depth, we recommend using the manual, and it explains what these strings contain. To enable it, simply go Serial Printer Data Output On. Although the Alpha console does come with an internal GPS unit, the user may want to use an external source. Now we have added the offsets in already, so what we have to do now is select what type of GPS we'd like to use, if any. So to do this, we go Survey and GPS. Now we have internal and external, or an auto function. The auto function will automatically default to an external source when it's detected. To set the GPS, please review the manual. It defines what strings can be accepted and the board rates that need to be input on. Finally, with our system configured, we now can activate the beacon. To do this, simply go down to beacon one and left click. The beacon will start tracking. Alternatively, you can use the F1 key to activate the beacon. And that concludes the video. We hope you found the video useful and informative. If you require any other information, please get in contact with us. It's important to note that configuring your USBL system is only half of it. You also need to configure your beacon. We have produced videos showing how to configure a micro and mini beacon, so we'll leave the link for that in the description below. Thank you for joining us today, I hope to see you again soon.